I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away from away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. She'll be discussing the beauty of the sheep hope. So, have any of you guys seen the movie Babe? A little kid, right, that learns how to be a shepherd for the sheep, and he runs around, and he learns what all the dogs do, and he hems the sheep in, and he drives them through the pastures and all that. So when I saw that movie, it looked so luxurious where the sheep were. The grass was green, it was a beautiful place, out in the countryside, a really lovely place to be. Then I read the scripture, and I got to the word sheepfold, and I started thinking, wait, I've seen where horses live when you walk, lock them up. This is not necessarily an idealistic place to be, right? Somebody's got to be shoveling all that stuff out. So I looked up online to see what a sheepfold was, and it is exactly the same as that. So it's going to be an enclosed place where all the sheep go. Somebody's going to have to be cleaning that up, or it's just going to get to be a mess. So hanging out in the sheepfold just actually does not sound like a place I want to go. So in our scripture today, Jesus tells his followers, I have other sheep that do not belong to this one fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. So I was obsessing on the sheepfold again. <laughs> So I looked up my own translation, because I can, and so I retranslated and I found there was problems with the way that this is translated. So this is the TJS translation, and that's the Terry Jane Stewart translation. And I have other sheep, a flock that is not in this palace. They need me to lead them, they will know my flock and my fold. Palace is the word that's there, not sheepfold. So I find it so interesting that there's no stinky sheepfold. It's a palace or a beautiful hall, if you look up the words. So I'm going to settle on the definition of a really beautiful place, a place of beauty. Jesus is going to search for other sheep that are not in this beautiful place. What a difference that makes to my perception of the sheepfold. So let's focus on what the sheepfold is for a minute. The community of Christ, the gathered body that is here. It's this beautiful place. So what makes it special? What makes this place beautiful? The true gift of beauty is each person here. Each of us brings to the sheepfold our own unique gifts and talents and passions. The beauty that Karen brings, it's the gift for beautifying the sanctuary. The beauty that Ben brings is a sacred, peaceful presence. The beauty Doreen brings is God's spirit. The beauty Ron brings is a gift for the community beauty. But there's a temptation when you're in a beautiful place, when you're gathered in a beautiful place. 
And the temptation is to create a museum that holds it just as it is, never changing. I think we've seen the painting of the Mona Lisa with her half smile forever frozen in time on the wall. Is that we, what we want for this beautiful community? Do we want to be that half, paint, that half smile of the Mona Lisa forever frozen in time, never changing? I don't actually think so. So what we envision for the beautiful community, what do we envision? In the Gospel of John, Jesus tells the community to love one another. So what does that look like? Loving God and neighbor. I think it might mean that we need to turn the community into a Mobius strip. And the beauty of the sheepfold will be reflected inside and out. Do you guys know what a Mobius strip is? This is your cue to hand them out. We have Mobius strips. You can give me one, please. This is a Mobius strip. And you each have one to play with. It looks like a twisted band of paper, and there's a whole bunch of math that goes into what this thing is. And if an ant were to crawl along the length of the strip, it would return to its starting point, having traversed the entire length of the strip on both sides of the original paper without crossing an edge. It appears to have two sides, but it really only has one side. There's only one side. So you can take a pen if you want to and you can trace it along. You'll get a line all the way. So it appears to have an inside and an outside, but there's not only one side. So maybe this is the sheepfold, the beauty of the sheepfold. We can have the beauty here in worship, here in this place, and have the beauty facing out to the world at the same time because there is only one path that leads to all places. One shepherd, one Lord of all, and we need to integrate the world with the beautiful community. So if we do that, I don't think we can stay frozen in time like the Mona Lisa, hanging in a museum with a half smile. The, mu the outside world, if we integrate that in, and we integrate outward into it, is changing so rapidly, we won't be able to stay stuck. we won't be able to make a portrait of who we are. It'll be more like a digital snapshot, really quick, and then we move on to the next thing, right? I was at a conference this week, and one of the speakers said that the most important word in theology is with. The world with the community. Us with our neighbors. Being with the hungry, walking with the homeless, being with the sick and the needy and the impressed. Do they change who we are as we walk with them? So we can be like a cylinder, which is like a can, right? That has an inside and an outside. Or we can be like a Mobius strip that has one side. One love, being with each other. So unity with the community that Jesus tells us in Scripture he's going to fetch. But Jesus isn't here to go and fetch anybody for us. We are. We are the gathered body of Christ. We must go out to the world and show them the beauty of the sheepfold. Notice that in scripture, Jesus goes to the other sheep. The sheep do not just randomly appear at the doorsteps of the beautiful community. We must go to them, and they won't come to us. So that means we have to enter into the reality of other people and see where they're hurting, where they need loving, or where they need healing. And in the scripture, Jesus says that he needs to lead them. So let's remember in the Gospel of John, that Jesus leads by washing the feet of his servants, or of, of his disciples, sorry. So leadership looks like going out and being a servant, being with others. So Wednesday, when I was at my conference, we decided to walk down to Pike's Place, Pike's Place Market because we were tired of sitting. 
And we walked down there, and as we were walking down the street, there was a woman standing on the sidewalk, and she was hungry. It was clear she was hungry. She couldn't talk, so it was clear she was also deaf. All she could do was stand and point at her mouth, and that's all she could do. So I was there with two other colleagues, and we saw her, and we thought, well, what can we do? I had a bag of almonds in my purse, so I offered her the almonds, but then she had no teeth. What can we do? I looked around. Luckily, my colleagues knew a little bit of sign language, so I was kind of the looker around and gatherer of resources because I could not speak any sign language, and they could communicate with her. And I thought, well, there's a Starbucks. They have yogurt. At least I know that's soft, and she can eat it. So we, all four of us, then went to Starbucks. We gathered together and bought her an egg salad sandwich, a yogurt, and a frappuccino. We took it to her and sat down with her. And we held hands, we prayed together, and she broke bread. Then we left her there, hopefully to be happy and satisfied, warm and full for one moment. We went to her, and we prayed together, and we broke bread together. That's the beautiful community. So can you do that? Can you go out into the world with love, see someone, enter into their world, helping to meet their needs, becoming the beautiful community facing out to them, and simply pray together, or break bread together, or just love each other? It's a challenge. But together, we are a beautiful community. And together, with Christ, we can do it. Let us pray. Oh Lord, you bring your beautiful community together to pray with you, to worship with you, and to serve you. Help us see the beauty outside these walls, to see other people, truly seeing them, to serve other people, truly responding to them, and to love other people as you have loved us. And now we bring to you, beautiful shepherd, the needs of each other and the needs of the world. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the beauty of your creation, the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, the sustaining love of family and friends, and the fellowship of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world those who make decisions on behalf of our church, all who work for peace and harmony, all who strive to save the earth from destruction and the church in every land. So what, for what else do we pray? And I pray for the family of Bob Sharpman and for God this week. Merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. My husband is having surgery on an aneurysm uh, this week on Tuesday. So, prayers that the surgery will be successful. Merciful God, hear our prayers. prayers. Prayers of safe travel for my son, who's coming back from Guatemala today after being gone for 17 days. So prayers for safe travel. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Oh God, you are the shepherd of our lives. Pour into our hearts your love and peace that we may follow you through valleys and mountains and fields and brush spreading your peace and your love in the name of Creator, Christ, and Spirit. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please turn to one another now and greet each other with the peace that passes all understanding. 